There you go. Okay, so this is a sketch I made uh, some time ago, many years ago, when I had still my blog, chanobove.com, when I was on Blogspot. And this one is why, because I, want, I wrote an article about clay modeling and how you make a clay uh, model. And therefore, in the slide, you can see that there are all the, the sketch of all the tools that I used to use when I was in school. And also a, a, an image that shows you how you organize a clay model, how you start to make a clay model. Raja, sir, can you teach us the interior part of CAD Design 2 in the future? Yes, Raja, but you can find uh, some of the interior design videos that are already made, okay? Where I explain how I do. So they are, they are here, you just to look for it. But uh, next time I will, uh, I will do a design sketching live and we'll talk about interior, okay? All right, so now the, you, you know, clay model, as you can see in this picture, clay model is a uh, scale model. And by you can do also clay modeling full scale, okay? Now, in some photos you see people working on uh, clay models that are in small scale. In other picture, the, the clay model is full scale. So when we do full scale, of course, we use a milling machine because we take the alias model and we mill the clay instead of milling a hard resin or wood or any other material. Because when you mill clay, of course, you can work and optimize, improve your model. But let's start from clay modeling in small scale. When we do a clay model in small scale, we do it because first of all, it's faster to do. Second, it's cheaper because it's small. Because clay, it costs quite a lot of money, yeah? The good clay. Then it's a, a, a great way, uh, if you use a one-fifth scale or one-quarter scale, you know, to have a real good sensation of your clay model surfaces almost like if you were in full scale okay because it's almost a you know it's a it's a beautiful scale one quarter scale main I, I i used to make a couple of models in quarter scale when i was in art center and you really have a, a big feel a big model you know you work by hand and then you can feel when you feel the clay when you work the clay when you sculpt the clay it's true that you have all your tools, like uh, the sections, the templates, you know, the tape, and all those tools that you need uh, in order to make sure that uh, your clay mod is well proportioned, that is really, really close to your drawings, your technical drawing, your sketches, so that you can uh, have all your sketches in front of you. You work your clay, you try to reproduce the same spirit, the same feeling of the sketch, because that's the objective. Now, why clay is so important? Because clay gives you the opportunity to use your, uh, how can I say, your artistic talent, okay, and bring that artistic talent onto the surfaces, which is something that machine and computers cannot do. So, when we used to do clay by sketching a scale model in clay, which means only three sections, the center section, top section, and side section. And then everything else was free, was freestyle. You know, it was like jazz, jazz, jazz music, pure improvisation. But then we used to sketch, you know, and, and then you get shapes and forms, then you would sketch also with pencil or markers on paper, you look at your model, or you take photo of your models, then you retrace it, and then doing this back and forth, you reach, you know, creative, a nice creativity, and also you learn, going from B-dimensional to three-dimensional, you know, I would say, you sort of a loop, you know, a loop system, you uh, make that model more mature and then using your hands to feel the surfaces you realize that you can uh, model that you can shape 
certain steps, certain intersections in a very sexy way, in a very seductive way. They can be or they can be very harsh. And you using your hand, you have a feeling of that. And that's something that on computer, when you make a beautiful alias model, even if it looks great in the screen, you know, on display, you cannot feel. You can't. Because the real, the real thing of touching, closing your eyes, you know, and touching those surfaces and feeling all, you know, all the sections, all the steps, and see how smooth it is, or how harsh it is, or where there is a mistake or a little bump or something that you have to change, or if it has to be more hollow, you know, because it's not enough. It's weak. That, that thing comes out by real you know, real experience. So you have to touch. You have to touch the clay. All right. So what's happening today, you know, in the last 10, 15, 20 years? It's true. Technology is there. And technology is giving us a great hand. Because technology is reducing the time. We can do things faster. And uh, you, maybe some of you already work on alias. When you do a very good alias model with an expert modeler and an expert designer, somebody that really knows what to look for in order to have the model under control, even if you don't have it uh, under your eye, you cannot touch it, but it's only on display. So when you get that type of professionalism and experience, you can reach a very high level of precision. So we can say that your clay model, that your future clay model will be milled very nicely. So once we decide that that uh, virtual model is correct, then what do we do? We take that uh, soft, that, excuse, excuse me, we take that file and we pass that file to the methods, you know, uh, office, you know, which is generally downstairs, where they have other computers with different software, and they translate that software for the mini machine, so that the mini machine can read the software, can read the model, and can mill your model. Now, it's easy to say, I'm going to mill my model, but what am I going to mill? In the picture you see now, you see a clay model, that has almost 15, 20 centimeters of clay. And then there is this uh, strange color stuff because that's the back. It's called the back in America, which is the structure. But you're not gonna make a, a, a full clay model, you know, model because it would, uh, it would be too expensive and too heavy because clay is heavy. So we use a, a sole, a material sole, of a stock foam, which is very, very light, with a wood base or metallic base uh, uh, sort of chassis, you, to which you put the real wheels. And then you put all this sole, this back, this structure, which is smaller than the real surface, okay, the external skin is smaller. And then by hand, this uh, structure model, future model, clay model, will be uh, covered by hot clay, which is like butter in a way, that has been uh, displayed, you know, applied by hands, by people, by modelers. Or I know that there is a machine that today can do that, you know, like spitting hot clay on the, on the machine on the, on the on the back. So once that thing is done, you will have two ways that it cools down because you cannot mill hot clay. The clay is so soft, it would, uh, you know, under the milling machine, you would have clay all over. Impossible. You want that clay to become hard. And the only way it's enough to be in a room of 15 degrees, 17 degrees, you know, uh, Celsius, which means a fresh, normal ambience temperature, but not hot. Because if you have uh, 25 degrees in the room, 
then the clay becomes soft and then will not be stable. You need a, a nice, stable surface, like a butter when you get that butter out of the free uh, refrigerator. You know, you can take a knife and you can work that butter, you can scrub that butter, you know, it doesn't matter. Same thing with the clay. So once this is done and that clay model rough is cooled down and, and therefore it's hard, then it's placed under the mini machine. And when you place it under the milling machine, the machine will start the milling process, reading the surfaces that we made before on agate. And that's how you get the clay model milled out. So it, it's a process that takes, uh, I don't know, 10 hours, 15 hours and continue. So in 15 hours, you have the whole car done. Okay. Half of the time, if you do only half model. All right. So when you do half model or the full model, you have your surfaces milled out but the quality of the surface will not be good because there will be all the signs of the milling point normal okay now wait a moment that i go back to my i go back to the studio because now you, you already watched this uh I have my mouse that doesn't want to work. All right, let's do this way. This way should work. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so here I am. So, basically, um, what do you have to do? You have to to go through the process of cleaning up. We say cleaning up. You clean up your model, all right? And when you clean up your model, it means that the modelers, okay, maybe three, four modelers together, they take all the tools for clay. This time we are in full scale. So some tools are bigger size than the one I sketched in the first sketch you saw. Because small model, small clay tools big model bigger clay tools of course and then clean up the whole surface so you go back to the original surface and there you discover the quality of your model that's the how can i say the the true moment you know where you discover what you guys did on, on computer. And then you can watch that model, you know, in three quarter front, side view from far, three quarter back. You can check from top because uh, some studios have a, like a, a sort of a passerelle on top where you go with the stairs. So you can, you know, just like if you were at the first floor of a building, watching down, and you can look at the car from the top with the lights and everything. And then you realize that there are a lot of surfaces that they are not working because they are too rigid. They are too straight. Maybe you, you felt that uh, the crown surface or your windshield or your side was correct in compu on the computer. Even if you had a very nice model with the nice renderings, beautiful reflections and you know, nice film, but then in reality, you discover that it's not the case. It's not enough. In general, that's what happens. When you go to reality, things look still timid, shy. They should be stronger. In fact, when we work on, on uh, alias in general, we exaggerate curvatures and some side type of reflections of few millimeters. We do it on purpose. Because by experience, we know that if we are just right, when we go and mill out and clean up the model and then check the model, the model will look too stiff. So it needs a lot of, a lot of work. 
and that work is called the artistic design modeling. The artistic design, ciao, uh, zve, ciao, sha, ciao. How are you? Sha from Pakistan, right? So that's what you what you realize that uh, those models need that artistic manual model making in order to I, I say in order to receive a soul because until that moment for me they are dead <laughs> dead models they are there very static and they are there is missing something as soon as you start cleaning up and you start uh, how can I say managing really well with that artistic model making which is an art huh? it's a talent you start making those surfaces and make all the necessary corrections suddenly you know that model comes to life and then it has a soul so that's the thing that is very important to say about clay modeling and technology then of course there is a lot of uh, interesting things because after that you did uh, after you did that by hand and you think that uh, it looks great okay then you have to make a correction of the alias model because that's how we talk to suppliers that's how we talk to engineers not only with the model we need a we need a file and therefore it's a virtual file so we have to make corrections also on the alias model so how do we do that we scan the model that has been retouched that has been corrected okay we scan the model with a very high precision with the new scanners that we have today those are laser scanners uh, full scale and they will give you exactly what you did they scan really well then we take that scan after a couple of hours and transfer that file to the alias uh, computer. We superpose both files, your model plus the scan, and we analyze all the sections and we check the differences so that you can make on alias the same adjustments that were done by hand the day before so you understand that in this process technology is very important because we go very fast you, you know 20 30 years ago we had to do sections by hand on the full scale model in order to make that scanning because you do take that section you put on technical drawing you will take the points you know and then you would transfer the points on the computer. It was a long, much longer process. And four years ago was even worse because everything was done by hand on technical drawing completely because we did not have alias modeling or CAD modeling. So today technology is giving us an incredible hand and it's evolving. Huh? Every two, three years there is there are new technology that help us in uh, making modeling uh, models much much better better quality and much faster okay but at the bottom line is that when we add our manual artistic talent in modeling those models i would say they are just like perfect they have a soul they look like uh, the sketches the hot sketches you made and everybody's happy then there is another step that when we make uh, this when we apply this artistic model making what happens sometimes is that we break <laughs> the the hard points because if you make some uh, on a door panel for example you make a door panel a little bit more curved than it's supposed to be of course you are getting inside the structure so the structure will come outside so then we have to rework again but this time we talk about decimal millimeters not centimeters so in my opinion we we can solve all those problems with no problem 
it's only a, a little bit time consuming to make sure that you get always the same quality that the hard points are taken care but but at the same time in that way you preserve the real spirit the real you know uh, soul of the original sketches or at least what was approved okay so did you get the point so far write comments tell me let me know okay all right now we are 13. okay for those that just uh, got now on the video live if you scroll up the chat you will find all my information about about uh, uh, drive design company uk who is uh, looking for several designers okay so it's hiring jobs i i send to you their link for their website but also the email to who to write okay and then also the page of their jobs on their website so that you can apply directly with your uh, with your portfolio pdf are the wheels made of clay too no rajat the, the wheels are in, in the beginning they are made in uh, they are milled eh? but they are made very very light they are made of uh, uh, foam soft foam white foam okay but then ciao john how are you thanks <laughs> but then when you get to the step where you have a real chassis and the clay model has a real chassis then of course we use the real size wheels with the uh, with the uh, aluminum alloy wheels or uh, steel wheels depending on type of project with the same the right size and just in case we have to show the clay model with the new wheel design the wheel design is done in journey two ways the cheap way very fast way but very good at the beginning the first step of the first clay presentation can be simply a very nice Photoshop sketch or color design sketch of your wheel design that has been chosen by your manager or directors. You uh, print this one in full scale and then with the spray glue, you stick it on a soft laminated, soft, uh, soft core you know, paper or cardboard. So you cut it out and you stick it with double tape or other glue onto the wheels so that you simulate you know the three-dimensional effect but on a, on, on a photo and then just in case those wheels are approved then we spend a little bit more money we make the alias model of the wheels without making clay models and we go directly in making a real milling to make a um, maybe uh, uh, fiberglass uh, type of model that will be painted afterward and then will be mounted onto the rim that is a specific rim adapted modified so that can receive all sorts of three-dimensional model of wheels all right john please comment just in case i forget something thanks nick this has been informative thank you you welcome sir no problem okay so you can see how you know interesting is to pass from 2d to 3d and the good thing is that a lot of people don't say but good teachers tell you will tell you is that in 2d it's very easy to make sure that everything looks good especially today you know, with Photoshop, you know, ciao, Fetty, hey, long time. How are you, Mr. Kaza? So, you can make everything look good. The thing is that when you go from two dimensional to three dimensional, there are the classical, difficult, we call the difficult knot, you know of a clay model or any modeling especially especially car design interior and exterior 
And some of those are, for example, just to give you an example, this part here, this part here, this corner, this is one of the hardest things to do. And you don't realize it. Ciao, Patriot. Ciao. And you don't realize it until you mill your model and you will discover that the first big huge problem it's gonna be here then there's another one that very often it's around the wheel arch okay oops this side the wheel arch because in general even if we make the wheel arch correctly on alias the the, the 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 last part here the bottom where you have the, the rocker panel that's where you get the biggest problem in aligning all the points so that from this point to the the back you know from this point to the back everything is going really well with the whole side of the car so there are all those things that you have to learn and then there are others that for example in general we have a big problem in this area for the type of crown, you know, because when you do an alias model, especially at the beginning, you make two surfaces, you make a nice radius or fillet, it looks good, you do the renderings, looks good, but then when you go into a real clay model in full scale and you look at it and you compare to a real car next to it, you discover that the thing is heavy, so you gotta do a lot of work on that again. User 111, most play models are milled and over height. Yeah, anyone can do a hot sketch. That's John. Once you get into the clay, it's another story. Yeah, suddenly reality hits home. Yeah, it's true. Then, the, for example, another thing that might seem really stupid is the cut lines. When we do the clay model, we put the cut lines and we mill. A little bit the cut lines we go under one millimeter because we want to make sure that on our clay model we see all the cut lines even if they are not real cut lines so we ask the the the, the alias modeler to make in the cut lines to go deep about two millimeters and come out you know so that when the mini machine will pass by there it will go inside and on the model you will see the cut lines okay so when you see the cut lines of your real clay in full scale they're all wrong you have to correct everything also the position of the rear lights or the front lights even if they are correct in terms of uh, packaging you will realize that in general they are too low or they are too big so uh, or maybe they are too horizontal and then you need to bring some dynamism, you know, the more dynamic design because the whole car needs still. And, and then I could, you know, I could continue with stories like that. But just to explain to you that to make a clay model out of milling, fix that milling to bring that artistic quality that is only manual uh, experience, then make corrections on your clay, on your model, uh, in, on uh, on uh, on alias and milling again with more details of course and once again you go back in retouching up updating to make sure that everything is a very very high quality is very very precise and most of all that has always a very sexy design and doesn't lose you know doesn't lose that soul we were talking about before because it's very easy to do a model that is respecting everything 100% with the right cost. But if the result is something that is dull, bulky, without a soul, who's going to buy it? So you have to, even if it's close to your sketches, there is a little step, you know, that you have to go over when you go into clay modeling, when you go into real modeling, that you have to ensure in terms of quality because in that quality, you don't have only the, the, the packaging, mechanical, cost, and, and uh, how can I say, process quality. You must have always the artistic quality. Because it's that artistic quality 
that will make sure that that mod model has a very high potential to be very successful. All right. I thought that means about teach me a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm very good. I'm studying industrial design. That's good. Junior student. Really like my schedule and drawings. All right, Fetty. I'm very, very happy. I am very happy. How difficult is to make the symmetry? Raja, we don't care about symmetry at the beginning because today's technology help us. When I used to make the, my clay model in Art Center, I was very worried with symmetry. And I think that John at his time was probably more worried than me because at that time we had the section, the templates, you know, like in the sketch, I show you, I show you the sketch again. I show you the sketch again. Look, the sketch. Okay, now the, 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 the photo, the picture will come again. In the sketch, you see that template, you know, that sketch. You would do all the model on one side, then make those templates, okay, and then move the template on the other side so that you can uh, reproduce. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. All right. So, you know, it, today uh, we mill half model. We do uh, the corrections. Alias modeling after the scan will fix everything. And yes, exactly, John. Thanks for bringing up to my mind this aspect. Uh, sometimes, especially at the beginning, you can do two designs on one model so that you don't have to worry too much with the symmetry. The only thing that is symmetric is the center line. But then, if you take a photo on three quarter from three quarter back and side view, you have one design. One design. Then when you turn, here you have a different design so that you can use, you know, you cut in half your clay, basically your clay model, and you do one side, side A and side B, which is an alternative design sharing the same center line. Then you scan both. Uh, I mean, at our time was like that. You would scan this little model. And then in alias, you would just make the one that was chosen. But when you go after in, um, uh, when you go to meal out your model, then of course, it's the machine. You ask the machine to do symmetrical. So the machine will, will do it automatically. Great. Now we are 15. So I just because we are 15 now, don't forget, you can become a member. You can support this channel. Financially, you can support this channel. If you are interested, click down, join, become a member, and check the video in which I explain how you can do it and what you get, you know, what you get back by doing by becoming a member but if you don't want to you can subscribe to this channel okay put your likes on the videos and help this channel to go up okay for the uh youtube algorithm then if you want to offer me a coffee now you have the super sticker super chat super mother super daddy button you can click it and you can offer me a coffee okay so now Let's go back to my on into the further in the program. One side would become the master surface side, and the other side would be the creative side. Exactly. So you have the master on one side, okay? The one that is your reference, okay? The one that we say it's already nice, it's perfect, don't touch it. And then we have on the other side variations. Of the same design and that's also very clever something really clever to do environment impacts of clay to be honest you user 112 i don't know and i don't care 
So, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, clay is done with uh, um, this uh, oil in it. That's for sure. There is, uh, I don't know how to say in English, uh, Zolfo, which is a, a very stinky <laughs> uh, chemical thing, mineral, that comes from uh, volcanoes, uh, ground, soil. And, uh, and then say so there's something about, we can go and check it out, you know. Let's, let's see what, uh, what Google tells us. I don't know. Car, clay, composition. The good thing of clay is that you can recycle. That's something that we don't say. You can recycle. Uh, no, I cannot find. I can't find. Uh, I cannot find quickly the information, but um, I, I will go and search. Very curious. <laughs> Sorry, user. Sorry. Please, uh, natural materials. Yes, there is a uh, zolfo, which is this uh, sticky material mineral that is in the soil of volcanoes area. You know. It comes really from uh, down the earth. There is oil because uh, it's uh, almost like terracotta, but add something different into it that is uh, that is quite different from terracotta. In fact, clay. The good thing of clay is that once your model is finished, okay, and after one year of the project, we don't need. Uh, we don't need anymore that clay model. We cut the skin that had, was painted because you can paint clay. We clean it up that, and then all the clay that was underneath, which is clean, we take it away, we put it back into containers, and we put it back into the oven, which is an oven that is, I think, around 50 degrees Celsius or or uh, I don't know, 30 degrees Celsius, so that it, it, it stays uh, warm and very, you know, chewy, like a chewing gum, okay? Chavon clay is popular. Yeah, there is also another one from Germany that is expensive. And that's the one we were using in, uh, in Fiat, which is a clay that is a little bit darker. There are two clay types, one that is a little bit lighter more chocolate, I would say, more Nutella, and the other one that is more uh, cacao, 85% uh, chocolate. Damien, hi Luciano, from my understanding of only when I did my National Divine 3D Design in the studio in South Africa. All right, I work with you such as high density, yes, that's a uh, phone. Right, the importance of making paper templates to develop or apply a variety of shapes on 3D form. Exactly. But because with the foam, soft foam, medium density foam, or hard density foam, so high density foam, which is really, really hard, with little bulls of air, so very, very compact uh, structure, you can make uh, those cardboard sections, just like uh, the one in my sketch, or you can make them out of wood if you want, or plexiglass. You know, a plexiglass of three, four millimeters thickness. You make those templates, and then the, the templates get inside your uh, your soft, uh, you know, or medium density uh, model, and and that's easier to send, you know, uh, the 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 remaining part to make sure that then the surface gets to the right section little by little and then you get an even shape following all your sections. But today you can mill those materials. So also those materials you can mill. For example, sometimes we do uh, make some parts like uh, front grills, for example. We make them out of uh, high density foam and after we spray paint and we mill them out cold exactly bravo john 
Yes, Kolb. I remember. I, I didn't remember the name, but that, that's exactly the one. Yeah, wax pigmented oil. Yes, yes, HB43. Yeah. Applying a base profile for the sections. Yeah, exactly, Damien. We're saying the same thing. Exactly. Anyway, uh, now that I explained to you a little bit how it works, the steps, the te how the technology helps us since many years how to make faster those beautiful models and the importance of soul, okay, the soul that you bring in your hands, okay, you work on your clay, you, you have to, you know, use your hands, close your eyes, feel the shape, feel the lines, feel everything. And I don't want to tell you how, <laughs> what else you could think in terms of activity, okay? But we got the point. I would like to tell you now a little bit about the pleasure of working with clay. Because that's something that a lot of people don't say don't talk about but is clay modeling fun is clay modeling nice or it's just a stinky job because clay is stinking it's true eh? clay is stinking your your clothes you can wash your hands i don't know how many times for two three days you're gonna stink like uh eau de toilette uh, <laughs> uh clay uh, number 45 okay call by call so that's the truth but what is very interesting in in this experience in this three-dimensional experience is that you take care of your little baby because when you make a, a a clay model it's different than making a model in foam or in wood or in plexiglass or in sheet metal but those are you know those are dead materials. All the beautiful cars in history were done by hand. Exactly. All those beautiful cars done uh, for the Ferrari or the Corvette, Stingray. I mean, come on, guys. Can you imagine when they were making that clay model? The 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 Ford. Uh, uh, I don't have the name in my hand in my head now, but uh, I, it will come up. But anyway, I had a teacher that was uh, ex for the clay model manager, a clay modeler and then clay model manager. And um, he was the one that worked on this uh, uh, Ford sports car in the 15, the 60s. Uh, wait a moment, I'll tell you. And that was, uh, and then he used to tell us, uh, we should, to show us pictures of one of that model, which was uh, great. Yeah, the Ford Mustang. I didn't have the name in my head. That's the age, huh? <laughs> so the Ford Mustang, yes. And uh, ciao, only striker. Welcome back, Mr. Kojo. Ciao, virtual reality has become so advanced it looks like reality. Yes, but you gotta be very careful with virtual reality, in my opinion. Uh, we will talk about this in, in a while, in a second. So, the third month, he was telling us a lot of stories about how many times late in the evening, you know, he was with his light, you know, light like this one. Uh, moving that light around to see read the surface, put his hands, close the eyes, and make that little Joe Ferrer, yes, Joe Ferrer, yeah. I I was uh, his student, and uh, I was and I am good friend of his wife, Maria Maria Daldivar, de Mexico. She was uh, a long time ago. She was a. Uh, the head of international uh, students uh, at Art Center, Rosa Maria Zaldiva, wife of Joe Ferrer. And so uh, Joe was telling us a lot of beautiful stories. I mean, we were like dreaming, you know, dreaming. Okay, so now about the technology, we are talking about real, uh, real uh, you know, virtual reality. Virtual reality can be very, very useful when you have, you have, when you have to look at interiors exteriors whatever you want to look and and, and feel today now they are really uh, 
very advanced in the feeling, you know, in the feel. So that's great. But see, I'm more a romantic guy, you know. So I use a virtual reality, yeah, I use it in my presentations. Uh, I did it, uh, I, I lived the virtual reality experience. It's more than 10 years now. And I don't dislike it. Huh? I'm the first one on some certain projects. Uh, I'm the first one to ask 100% the virtual reality presentation. But the joy, <laughs> the, the, how can I say, the good, the happy feeling when you have a real nice model under your eyes or you are staying inside, you look, you sit down, you, you watch everything. You can smell a little bit that paint, you know, and stuff. That's another story for me. It's like uh, watching the real car, knowing that uh, hands, you know, uh, that talent made that thing. And virtual reality is a good step, intermediate step, because with virtual reality, just like with the first clay model, uh, milled model, with virtual reality, you can discover a lot of mistakes right away. Uh, especially in interior. Interior is difficult because of proportions. So when you make your first model, even in foam or or in wood or, or or in clay, sometimes proportions are a little bit strange. Even if on computer everything looks perfect, then you make the real model, you respect the packaging, and you discover that uh, the distances are a little bit strange. When you do this in real, in virtual reality, you sit right away and you can measure the distances. You can measure the differences so that you can apply. You make a list of all the things you have to change. And then uh, with your clay modeler, with, with your uh, alias modeler together with designers, they have that list and they update the model before going into a model that is time consuming and has also cost. I thought designed to do the 3D model first and then the clay model so that they can understand the surface even better in all the angles. No, Rajat, if you want to understand uh, a, a, a real surface better from all the angles, I believe that you should first do a small clay small scale clay model which is a sketch clay model as i said at the beginning of this video live what do you do you make three or four maxi sections okay center line two x sections on the side two side section okay center line and a top full section that's all and then you sketch you have all your sketches in front of you you have the clay you have the black tape you have your tools and you have fun a little bit like freestyle then you have to take that model my nose you take that model you scan that model and you take that model on computer in alias and then you superpose overlap that one onto the package because that's the moment of the reality of you know between technique when technique meets uh, artistic uh, design value and if you are a wide designer with a little bit of experience you will not be off of centimeters so you put the two things together and you know that you have to apply some modifications but one thing you really have under control will be the soul of your sketches the spirit of your sketches it will be alive it will not be a dead thing simply because you start from the package okay so then after that of course we go back ciao majid we go back to the same you know the same steps as i discussed before we get into that loop you know uh, modeling milling uh, fixing scanning modeling milling presentation you know okay so first of all i hope you like this uh uh small slideshow i made to explain to show you a little bit of what we were talking today i hope you are happy with uh, 
the job hiring news that this time are not too many. I'm sorry about that. There is, uh, but as I said, Tata Design in India and uh, Shanghai in Torino, they are looking for lots of designers in different type of uh, studios. So exterior, interior, XUI, uh, uh, cast modelers, alias modelers, color and trim. Uh, so keep on checking if you are interested, if you think you are qualified to do that, go do it don't be shy even if they tell you no it's okay you make an experience okay you make an experience and if you are very young it's much better to make the experience now than when you be older okay thank you john can 3d printers replace small scale clay models we are already doing that raja we are already using the 3d printing to make small models from this size to bigger sites we already did but there is one problem with those with those models they are very fragile and they are very costly when we have to paint them because you want to paint them so we tried the process and it costs too much it costs just like clay and the problem is that you cannot modify them so that's a not a bad problem okay so 3d printing in, for me in this domain it's more when we already finished 100 percent everything and you do something very detailed with very good paint job graphics and everything and then you don't touch it anymore you know you you put it you put it under a plexiglass box to protect it and that's it you know or or you could do some uh, quick uh, 3d printing but rough you know rough no no paint job just to check proportions because that would be fast but at this point why not neo white soft light foam it's cheaper maybe it's cheaper faster very light you know and you can recycle that because you can cut it and you can recycle that uh, you can recycle that for uh, creating the back the back of other clay models but it's true john is right 3d printing it's very much used when we have to do all sorts of small interior parts in modeling even on clay modeling in fact on clay interior models in the last years since 3d printing became very accurate we don't do all the center console stuff all the buttons the, the rings all those little things you know it's useless T too much time consuming so we delegate 3d printing technology to make those things we apply very likely black color or the color of the interior and then we put them inside the clay and the, the final result is very very uh, believable you know very credible damien but where artificial intelligence based car design interaction and vr could cover this also no this diamond this will never happen analog with human touch is the best i think so too and uh, what you said before in your comment with the artificial intelligence uh, all the technology you combine everything and i am here with my microphone saying hey make me a car it's gonna be like this and like that okay and i want this in two minutes and then in two minutes i have the car that looks great that's bs okay bullshit all right so i was very clear on that <laughs> uh have you seen how mike roch puts dino on models no but i know dino because that's something that exists since uh three years at least in, uh, that i saw but i know that this dino was used also before i became a car designer and on this john can tell us a little bit about it Dino is great. It's the best way of a clay model to apply this film, check all the reflections, all the mistakes, all the lines. Then you take it out, use water, okay? You apply water, and then you use something to make sure that you can scrape it without damaging the model, the film. But you want to make sure that all the air little bubbles go out, go away, so that it really sticks to the surface really well. 
and it looks almost like a painted surface. So it's very nice. If you don't have Dynock, or if you don't want to buy Dynock because it costs money, there's another trick, which is uh, you, since the 50s. All right, great, John. You can use the transparent plastic, food plastic, wrapping plastic, you know, the one that we put around a dish to, to preserve uh, our food that was cooked the day before. You use the same one, same process with water. It sticks, it's transparent, but you can see reflections. Yeah, before that was, uh, clay was painted. And, and that's, and we learned that in school, you know, to paint our clay models. So you work your clay models a lot. And when it's really precise, when you, are, when you really feel you did the job, of course, you have always a plan, yeah, and don't forget that. It's not that you go all the way, all the time as, as you like. You have a plan. But it, within that planning, that timing, you really get to that day, that moment, you say, now I stop. Now it's the paint job time. And that's when you are dedicated to painting, which is also another process. We'll talk about paint job next time or another time okay all right so well you know what i had fun in talking about this argument this topic because uh, i like a lot clay modeling i did several clay models and actually i was pretty good in doing clay models that's one thing that uh, mythical harry bradley told me yeah your clay looks pretty good <laughs> thanks so all right great so see you Next Friday, this weekend, we have Formula One Grand Prix in Spain, in Barcelona. Last weekend, we had uh, the 500 Indianapolis, which was great. Okay, especially at the end. I mean, everything happened at the end, actually. All right. We have the end of soccer championship in Italy. So that's also a nice weekend for that. What can I say? Have a good weekend. Thank you very much for being with me. Subscribe, put your likes, share, become a member, whatever you want. I hope you liked it. Ciao. Ah, John started as a clay model. I didn't know that. You're welcome. I, I, before going away, I just want to answer to HB43. For clay modeling, you need to learn how to work on clay when you are in school. Now, lots of transportation that are in schools give you the opportunity to learn how to use clay, how to model professionally. So if you, while you are at school, don't feel like you want to be or you have that real talent as a car designer, you might have the talent as an alias modeler or a clay modeler. And therefore, you can make a portfolio for clay modeling or for alias modeling. And we will talk about this in a specific Friday live design talk, okay? I promise. There are also other schools, which are sculpture artistic schools that are a little bit all over in the world, okay, in every country. And they use a material that is very, very similar to this clay. And there you can learn the basics you know, of sculpting or sculpture. You, you see, CCS, there you go. Art Center also, I think that the Italian Design School uh, uh, IED also is offering that, okay? Well, thank you very much to all of you. Grazie, John. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.